Now we know how to do arithmetic in binary, but what we really want is for a digital circuit to do the arithmetic for us. The next step toward that goal is learning about a concept called complements. The complement of a binary number is necessary for representing negative numbers. There's a ones complement of a binary number and a twos complement of a binary number. We'll discuss the differences in their usage a little later, but first we're going to learn how to find each. So finding the ones complement of a number is pretty straightforward. All you need to do is flip all the binary digits. So the ones become zeros and the zeros are going to become ones. The ones complement of 1011010 is 01001101. In a digital circuit, this is the same as sending every bit through an inverter. That's all there is to the ones complement. So now let's look at the twos complement. The twos complement of a number is found by finding the ones complement and then adding one. So we just found the ones complement of 1011010. So let's use that to find the twos complement. The ones complement is 01001101. And now we add one to that. So this will give us 01001110. This is the twos complement of 1011010. Now there's another way to find the twos complement of a number. Let's look at that binary number 101-11000. This time, what we're going to do is start with the least significant bit. That's the zero all the way on the right. We copy all the zeros up to the first one, and we're going to copy the one as well. After that, we flip all the bits to the left of that one like we're doing a partial ones complement. So let's look at that again with our number here. All right, we copy from the least significant bit and going left, zero, 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 one. Now we flip the rest of the bits, zero, zero, one, zero. So the twos complement of one, zero, one, 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 zero, zero, zero is zero, one, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, zero. Now you can try taking the ones complement of the number and adding one to verify that you get the same twos complement. A digital circuit that performs the twos complement would look something like this. The number is transferred in parallel through a bank of inverters. This is the ones complement of the numbers we've seen. The ones complement is then input into an adder. And yes, that's a real thing. And one is added to the ones complement. The output is then the twos complement. Whether you're using the ones complement or the twos complement of a number, getting back to the original number means taking the same complement again. So the ones complement of 101100010 we found to be 01001101. Taking the ones complement of that ones complement and we get 101100010. That's our original number. The twos complement of 101100010 was 01001110. Now taking the twos complement of this and we get back 101100010. Okay, time for the big reveal. What is all this about? Assigning negative and positive values to numbers. There are three different methods that we employ to indicate signed integers. These are the sign magnitude form, the ones complement form, and the twos complement form. All three forms can be used to express decimal values. However, when we get to very large and very small numbers, we do away with the sign magnitude form and use only the ones or the twos complement. As a matter of fact, the twos complement is used almost exclusively in computer architecture and programming anymore. Now the one thing all these different versions of signed numbers has in common is a signed bit. No matter which method we use to indicate signed numbers, the leftmost bit is the signed bit. If the bit is 0, the number is positive. If the bit is 1, the number is negative. So with that said, let's look at the signed magnitude form of representing signed integers. This is the simplest of all the methods. The leftmost bit is telling us whether the number is positive or negative, 
and the rest of the bits are the binary number. So here we have 1011100 and 0011100. In the first number, the leftmost bit is 1, so the number is negative. The rest of the digits make up the magnitude of the number. In this case, 011100. Try pausing the video and see if you can come up with what decimal number this is. Okay, I hope you got 28. So this is the sign magnitude form of the number negative 28. The negative is the sign and 28 is the magnitude. For the second number, we've only changed the leftmost bit. So the only thing that has changed is the sign. So this number is positive 28. Let's switch over to the ones complement now. Positive numbers like the one here are represented just like sign magnitude form. The leading zero indicates a positive number and the rest of the bits are the magnitude of the number. So again, we are looking at positive 28. The difference comes when we want a negative 28. To find negative 28, take the ones complement of positive 28. Once we switch all the bits, the binary number is now 1100011. The leftmost bit being a 1 indicates a negative number. However, the rest of the bits do not make up the magnitude. This magnitude is actually 35. However, we can still find the number negative 28. We make the most significant bit negative then add all the powers of 2 like we are finding the magnitude of a normal binary number. And finally, we add 1 to the result. So in our example here, we have negative 2 to the 5th power, plus 2 to the 1st, plus 2 to the 0, plus 1. This gives us negative 32, plus 2, plus 1, plus 1. The result is negative 28. The twos complement is the same for positive numbers as the sign magnitude and ones complement form. To find the negative number, simply take the twos complement of the positive number. Again, positive 28 is 0011100. Taking the twos complement, pause now and try it for yourself, and we get 1100100. This is negative 28 in 2's complement. More specifically, this is negative 28 using 7 bits. When using complements, it's important to indicate how many bits the number is, since we have the issue with negative numbers not having the same magnitude as the positive number. The total number of bits includes the signed bit. To find any value of a 2's complement number, whether it is positive or negative, simply sum the weights of the numbers beginning with the signed bit. The sign bit will be negative, just like in one's complement. For positive numbers, the negative weight is being multiplied by zero, so the number comes out positive. In our example here with negative 28, we have negative one times two to the sixth, plus one times two to the fifth, plus one times two to the second. This is negative 64 plus 32 plus four, which is negative 28. Maybe at this point you're wondering, what are the biggest and smallest numbers that you can make? And so far, our examples have involved 7 bits, which in the digital world really isn't a thing. Normally, 8 bits are used to represent integers, signed or unsigned. These 8 bits are called a byte. Okay, so how many numbers can a byte make? We can find out using a little knowledge of probability. If there are 8 spots, and 7 of them can either be a 1 or a 0, and the 8th is either a positive or negative, then we have the following. Two possibilities for 8 spots means 2 to the 8 possibilities. This comes out to 256 numbers. If we're dealing with unsigned integers, the numbers are 0 to 255. If we are using signed integers, the range is from negative 128 to positive 127. The reason that the magnitude of the positive side is one less than the negative is because we have to include zero as a number, and with a signed bit, zero is counted among the positive numbers. 
So there are 128 negative numbers, 127 positive numbers, and one zero, which makes up 256. One byte is pretty small. So there's a way to calculate the largest and smallest numbers your circuit or programming allows. Since nearly all modern programming and logic circuitry uses two's complement, these formulas work for that. So let n represent the number of bits in a number. The total number of combinations is 2 to the n power. This is true no matter what method you are using. In two's complement, the range of numbers is negative, the quantity, 2 to the n minus 1, 2, positive, the quantity, 2 to the n minus 1, minus 1. This gives us a magnitude of n minus 1 and one signed bit. So what are the upper and lower limits of a 16-bit number? Also, if you are using an unsigned number, what is the biggest number you can represent? Go ahead and pause the video and see if you come up with the right answer. Okay, I hope you took a sec to figure this out on your own, and I also hope you got negative 32,768 for the lower limit and positive 32,767 for the upper limit. For the lower limit, we plug 16 into the n and get negative 2 to the 16 minus 1. This is negative 2 to the 15, which is negative 32,768. Now we do the same for the upper limit by plugging in the 16 for n. This gives us 2 to the 15 minus 1. That comes out to 32,768 minus 1, which is 32,767. The second part is kind of a trick question, because now we aren't using signed integers, so there is no signed bit. Instead, the leftmost bit is the most significant bit and is included in our calculation. So the total number of numbers in this case. So we take 2 and raise it to the power of 16 and get 65,536. This is the total number of combinations of ones and zeros. However, since zero counts as the first number, the highest number is actually 65,535. All right, that is a lot to take in. So get familiarized with the concepts in this video, and in the next video, we're going to concentrate on floating point numbers. See you next time.